from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our first reading from Acts, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. And he told us how he had seen an angel sent, uh, stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us, when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? Then they, when they heard these things, they fell silent. And they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is our text. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we ask by your Holy Spirit's power, Enlighten our hearts and our minds and work in us that same repentance that leads to life, a repentance that turns us to you or a repentance that causes us to trust in you and in your word, uh, a repentance that not only reminds us that we are in need of, of forgiveness and a savior, but a repentance that draws us to the one who gives us life and salvation the one who we alone can bring us eternal joy. In his name, amen. So when have you ever felt that you were in the way? When have you ever felt that you were in the way? Somebody. Okay, Dave. Sometimes with my kids. Sometimes with your kids? All right. Lauren? <laughs> All right, Mary. In the kitchen, my mom, my sister, I back off. Too many hands. Too many hands in the kitchen. Really? Yep, yep. Lou. When my sister and uh, then her boyfriend were going somewhere, and I went along. <laughs> I was the third wheel. Third wheel. Yeah. <clears throat> Somebody else. So I, I want you to get kind of this picture in your mind. Have you ever been in a grocery store? You know exactly what you need to pick up. You know exactly where it is. You go there, and there's somebody standing right in front of the item you need. Not moving. Looking on their phone, checking their list. Standing there, standing there, looking at everything up and down and all over the place, looking for what they're looking for, and you're trying to be patient. You're trying to be a good Christian person, and you're okay, you can do your thing, and probably after about 10 minutes, you just reach around, grab it, and quickly go. You know, so you know, you, sometimes you're the one in the way, sometimes someone else might think they're uh, the one in the way, but how often, I'm going to ask you, do you get in God's way. Because that's really what we heard in this passage of Scripture. Um, go to like verse 16, if you would, Naomi. I want you to hear those words again. So it says, As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as on us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? So I want you to think, when do we get in God's way? 
and especially for the three of you on your confirmation day, there will be times where you get in God's way. Because you think about it in this way. God's got a plan. God knows exactly what he wants to do. God's got a plan, and he spelled it out. God's got a plan, and he knows the way he wants things. And yet, what are we doing? Put up that first picture, Naomi. God, you can try to do what you want, but here's the roadblock. And if this one ain't enough, well, maybe this one will be. You see, sin is a roadblock. And it comes in lots of different forms. And when we think about what that means, it means that God wants us to come to him, not with our own notions of how things should be, not with our own idea of the way things ought to be, but trusting in his way, relying on his path. And that's what we really need to hear, and especially for the three of you. You've got two ways to do things now. God's way or your own way. And if you're going to do it your own way, you're being like that big rock up on the screen. Because you're getting in God's way. God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and I can't look into your minds, and I can't look into your hearts, and even I can look at what you put on a, on a test paper, you can tell me that you know these things, you can display the knowledge, but has it translated into faith? You know, some of the things you say in class would give me the idea that it has, but I can't be sure. And there's only two people that know for sure. It's God. And it's you. So is your faith real? Or are you putting on an act? Is your faith real? Or are you getting in God's way? Because he wants to work in you. He wants to give you his gifts. He wants to draw you closer to himself. See, and when we look at what happened in the scripture reading, Naomi, if you go back to the beginning uh, in the first verse, we see that you know, both Peter and this circumcision party are in that getting in the way thing. Notice what it says. Now the apostles and brothers who were throughout Judea heard the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him saying, you went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. So here's this group who thinks that in order to be a Christian, you first have to be a good Jew. Well, there's a selling point for Christianity. You got to be circumcised. They're lining up. Really? And Peter's a little bit still buying into this line of thinking. He's buying... Well, don't you? But then God shows him something and tells him something to help him see that he's got a plan. A plan, by the way, that was in the scriptures, in the Old Testament prophecies, going back for centuries. That this was God's plan. He was choosing people, not just Jews, not just proselytes, people becoming Jews, but he's choosing Jews and Gentiles to believe in him. And the evidence was how they responded in faith. How they responded to the word of God. How they responded in repentance heading toward faith. And so... Who knew? Well, when they confessed it, 
They did. In a few minutes, you guys are going to stand up here and have the opportunity to individually confess. And at this moment, I'm praying, and I think everybody in the room is praying, for your faith that it would be strengthened, that it would be blessed, that it would be encouraged. But at the same time, it's still your faith, still your relationship with Jesus Christ. It's still a personal thing between you and God. Where will you be? And as we look at what is happening with Peter here, you know, Peter wasn't you know, fully on board right away either. He didn't fully get it. You see, God has a plan to change our lives. And the problem is that sin issue is constantly in the way. That sin issue is like a disease in us that continues to want to take over. But only Jesus can cure it. Only Jesus can heal it. Only Jesus can cleanse us of that. Now, let me put up that next picture if you would. In Mark chapter 1, a leper came to Jesus, imploring him, kneeling, and said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I will be clean. And immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. Why was it important that Jesus touched him? Why was it important that Jesus touched him? I want you to think about it. And you guys can answer too, it's okay. I'm not just preaching to the three of them. Why was it important that Jesus touched him? Why? He hasn't been touched in years and years and years and years. And he felt like he was in the way. He felt like he was uncared for, unloved. Nobody wanted him around. He felt like he was in the way. He felt like that because leprosy was a horrible disease, absolutely contagious. Did you spend the last couple of years having to wear a mask? He had to wear it 24-7 from the day he was diagnosed with leprosy. A mask and had to distance himself from everyone. No contact. We weren't just talking six feet apart. We were talking in a colony, miles away from everybody. He musters up his courage after hearing about Jesus, and he comes. If you will, he says to Jesus. Jesus says, I will be clean. See, some 13 years ago, your parents brought you into a church. Two of you, right there. Will, somewhere else. <laughs> and at the moment that the pastor spoke the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, what happened? I will, Jesus said, be clean. Because in those words, he washed away your sins. Those words, he called you, chose you, and invited you to be part of himself, one with him, and have that ongoing relationship. And now, these 13 years later, you're going to take those words that were spoken on your behalf by your parents and your sponsors, and you're going to make them your own. And you're going to take on that responsibility for yourself. And you're going to remember, because you were told to remember, about that day when it was spoken on your behalf. Now you're going to say, this is mine. I believe I was chosen. Chosen by Jesus, chosen to be his own, chosen as he worked faith in my heart, chosen as he called me to believe. 
But was it really that day 13 years ago? Was it? Actually, it wasn't. It was before the foundation of the world. If you are truly his, if you are truly his own, he made this promise before the foundation of the world called predestination. He chose you to be his own. Next Bible verse, if you would, Naomi. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. You see, he's calling you. And that call is one that he does not revoke. He wants you to hear it in your heart and in your mind constantly. He wants you to hear it and embrace it and follow and not to get in his way. Because we can either listen to his call and embrace what he's giving us, or we can say, no, I'd rather go the way of the world. No, I'd rather go the way that the world wants to go. Oh, no, I'd rather go the way that my heart of sin wants to lead me. No, I'd rather do this on my own. One is a path to destruction, one is a path to life. So when he calls, that's telling you he wants you. He wants you to be his own. He wants you to know that he has washed away your sins. He wants you to know that you are precious in his sight. And who are we to get in his way? Next Bible verse, if you would, Naomi. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises, some count slowness, but is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. See, the last thing that we heard in our reading today, and Naomi, go to verse uh, 18, if you would. I want you to listen to that again. And when they heard these things, they fell silent. They glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also, God has granted repentance that leads to life. There were three things that were on your test toward the end. How do we prepare ourselves to take communion? First was, am I, say it with me, sorry for my sins. That's repentance. That's the start of our relationship with God. Am I sorry for my sins? Do I believe in Jesus and his word in the sacrament? Do I plan to amend my sinful life? See, those are the ways that he is leading us into repentance that leads to life, leading us into that relationship that he wants us to have with him. That's what everything is about. Life of faith has to be a life of daily and regular repentance. I can't get in God's way and say, no, I'm happy with my sin. I'm staying here to you. And God's not going to let go. God's going to continue to come after you. Go back to that verse again, Naomi, from uh, 2 Peter. Notice what it says. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises. Some count slowness. Read it with me. But is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. So there's going to be times where we're getting in his way. There's going to be times that we're turning away. There's going to be times that we want to go on our own and follow our own sinful lifestyle. You think God's going to say... Fine, forget it. Walking away. Nope. God's not going to give up on you. And so sometimes it's going to have to be someone coming to you and saying, Hey, God still loves you. Where are you going? What are you doing? And mamas and dads and grandmas and grandpas, I hope you're hearing this. It's okay to say to them, Hey, where are you going? What you doing with your life? 
God still loves you. Don't turn your back on him. Because he's patient. He doesn't want any to perish. But all of us to come to repentance. If you hear nothing else of anything I say today, and I can almost guarantee that's going to happen, remember this one thing. God loves you. God called you. God chose you. It's in your hands now. How do you respond? God loves you. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all.